Good morning to you all, brothers and sisters in Christ. We want to thank you for taking your time to listen to the Word of God, taking your time to follow the Scriptures. We know sometimes it's not easy, but we really encourage you to continue committing yourselves to what you've already been doing by going through this recordings recordings and to try to find out the truth and we we'll only preach the truth and that is the truth coming from the word of god and that's what we are also dedicating ourselves to let us pray lord our god as you call the israelites to rededicate themselves after crossing the desert and the prodigal returned to his father's house so you call us to return to you your us hear your call afresh to respond by giving you our hearts and lives to the glory of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, I'm going to call Brother Ben to come and read the word of God from the book of Joshua chapter 24 verses 1 to 3a and then verses 14 to 25. Thank you. Thanks Johnson and it's uh, great to be here and reading the word of God again this, this wonderful Wednesday. Uh, it's going to be a great message. Uh, so, as jo Johnson mentioned, I'll be reading from Joshua 24, 1 to 3a, and then verses 14 to 25. Then, then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. Now, 14 to 25, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of your ancestors, worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seemed undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors serve beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are leaving, living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents up out of Egypt from the land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we travelled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites, who lived in the land, we too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua said to the people, You are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been good to you. But the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then, said Joshua, throw away foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, We will serve the Lord our God and obey him. On that day Joshua made a covenant for the people, and there at Shechem he reaffirmed for them decrees and laws. And this is today's message and the word of the Lord. And uh, we'll get Johnson back up here to share with us this amazing message that the Lord's put on his heart. Thanks, Johnson. Thank you so much, Brother Ben, for the reading of the word of God. Uh, this morning, I've decided to share with you on a theme, a question of loyalty. A question of loyalty. 
Nearing the end of his life, Joshua called a summit on the mountain. The call was heard both near and far with everyone who was anyone traveling to the historically significant site. So Joshua, as you recall, led the people into the promised land after Moses had died. So the people lived in the promised land for quite some time when our lesson unfolds. The view from the mountain top was spectacular. On a clear day from the top of Alba, the people could see almost all the way to Jerusalem and some 40 miles to the south. So to the north, the snow-capped Mount Hermon was visible. So looking westward was the Great Sea and the long reach of Mount Carmel. So to the east was the Cape Cavity exposing the Jordan River. So there on the mountain, most of the promised land would be visible. It must have been a breathtaking view. Besides being strategically important as a trade route, Shechem also held historical significance as well. It is the place where Abraham migrated and where God first told him that all the land in his sight would one day belong to his numerous descendants. It is believed that at Shechem is where Jacob built an altar. It was there that Jacob saw a vision of angels descending on the ladder from heaven. And centuries later, Jesus would converse with a Samaritan woman at Jacob's well in that same general vicinity around that area. So there was one thing Joshua wanted to be absolutely certain about before he died. And that was if the people would remain loyal to the Lord, their God. In the role of a prophet, Joshua tells the people, Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors saved beyond the river in Egypt and save the Lord. Perhaps it was easier for the people to trust God when they were traveling out in the desert. Depending on God to meet their every need during their long journey. Than it was once they settled in the promised land where they were more self-sufficient. Once they, they became distracted with other things that began to crowd God out of their lives. So Joshua knew how difficult it would be for the people of Israel to devote themselves totally to God. He knew that their ancestors before them had made similar promises that failed to keep. So there on the mountain, Joshua wanted the people to remember all that God had done for them in their recent past. He wanted them to commit themselves to God. So Joshua called for the people to put aside all the objects that got in their way for their relationship with God, and including foreign gods. He wanted them to remain loyal to the God who loved them and had led them to be to the promised land. So today there are continued to be main voices as well as activities that seem constantly to draw us away from our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I think we are hearing so many voices calling us. Some of them are saying, oh, okay, just stay home. Don't worry about worshiping. Many of us have good intentions and do not purposely allow other things to crowd our minds, the fortune of life, but eventually they do, nonetheless. There was one question Joshua wanted the people to answer before he was gone. Will the people remain loyal to God when I am gone? That's the question. This is a question that all of us need to ask ourselves. We will remain loyal to God. We will remain committed Christians. Or will we unintentionally stray in some other directions? Following false doctrines. Following false teachings. This passage reminds us that something is expected from each one of us. We are not mere spectators or pure potatoes. Notice how many times Joshua used the word save in this passage. A total of 15 times in 11 verses. To save the Lord is more than just paying lip service. Is doing practical. In Joshua's mind, it was all or nothing. So just as there is no such thing as a part-time believer, Joshua aided the people to commit to the Lord, their God. 
Joshua challenged the people, now if you are unwilling to save the Lord, choose this day whom you will save. That was the challenge. At the same time, Joshua was clear about his own priorities. As for me and my household, we will save the Lord. So Joshua is declaring to the people, he's telling the people that this is my priority. And I think it is a priority of every father in the family to declare and to say, me and my household would worship God. Joshua wanted the people to follow his example. We all need role models, people with positive examples as we can follow. I read a story about a young woman called Alison. She had just returned to her hometown where she was greeted by a young sister whom she had babysat when she was only three to five years old. Alison had become the state tennis champion at the high school, set a number of athletic records, and then unfortunately fell into drug use and scuffles with the law before giving her life to Jesus Christ. Her young sister looked to Alison as a role model. I decided that I was going to become just like you, sister. She told her older sister. I too became the state tennis champion. And wherever there was an athletic record posted with your name on it, she said, I either made it or beat it. I figured it was in my genes. Then Alison was astonished to learn that her sister had also drifted into drugs and trouble with the law. Just like you did, said the young woman. Alison then took her aside and shared with her a new story about a new life in Christ. So in retelling this story, Alison was amazed how her sister literally walked in a footstep, believing that her story was Alison's story and vice versa. Alison hoped her young sister would continue to follow in her footsteps and accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior. Because everyone needs a role model. We need someone to follow. Joshua wanted the people to follow his example and save the Lord. That's why he said, as for me and my family, would save the Lord. There was good reason for the people to, resp to respond and to save the Lord. God was responsible for bringing the people to the promised land, as Joshua reminded them. For it is the Lord our God who brought us out and our ancestors from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And further, the Lord God protected us along the way that we went. So the people had ended each a covenant relation with God. One thing we have learned about covenants is that God always takes them seriously. If you go into a covenant with God, God takes it seriously. They could not and would not be broken. So the people were required to save the Lord God and in return God would continue to be their God and would continue to protect them. So Joshua challenged us today asking what kind of people will we be into whom we will commit ourselves. Commitment is one of those ways that either makes us feel uncomfortable or something that we can easily dismiss or not take as important. It's almost like Joshua was saying to the people, look around, look around everywhere. Name any other object of our worship that will measure up to God in your lives. Find another source of contentment like God. You see that you can't. So the facts won't allow us to come and see it another way. So God alone has been the source of your victory. And he alone needs to be the object of your devotion. Because he has been looking after you. Having weighed the option, Joshua shows us next how to register our choice with his classic statement. Choose you this day. Not tomorrow. This day. He suggests that the value of making our choice and registering it in the presence of others. With his declaration, as for me and my house, we will save the Lord. He gives us an example to follow when we think about how to register our choice to give ourselves to Jesus Christ. There lies the problem many of us face with choices in general. We have a tough time to make him them. With options before us and the best choice right in front of us, we hesitate to make choices. 
We can't settle into a decision. Our indecisions becomes our decision. And the choice we make not to decide leaves us aimless and restless, constantly wavering between the options, but never being able to nail down our choice. So in the worship, we have an opportunity to make our choice and nail it down in our hearts. As we sit in our pews in worship service, we can bring the prayer of commitment to the Lord, saying, after his people whom Joshua challenged to make up their minds, will save the Lord. They ended up saying those will save the Lord. In our times of private worship, we can register our willingness to let the Lord have our lives. In our Bibles, we can jot down the date, the time when we register our choices. To say, on this day, my life was changed because of Jesus Christ. Perhaps you have already made your choice and you smile quietly as you reflect on the value of registering it in your worship. Maybe you've set your heart on the Lord in a quiet place at a time that always remains one of the critical turning points of your life. However, you could still be wavering in the sea of decision, tossed back and forth. The time has come for you to say, I will save the Lord. And then I, I'm urging you, not tomorrow but today, to make a decision to say, I will save the Lord. This is the time, the right time the story about Joshua gathering the people of Israel at Shechem shows us something else about choices. He demonstrates for us the value of investing in our choice to follow Christ. Registering our choice confirms our decision to give our lives to the Lord. But investing in our choices helps us to live out the choice we have made. So we live according to what we have made. The decisions. If I made a choice that I want to read the Bible every day, I'm committing my life, my mind, everything, so that I don't omit a day I have to read the Bible and to understand what the Bible is saying. That's probably why Joshua said he didn't think that God's people would leave out the decision they'd registered in his presence. He remembered a time a generation ago when God's people made a similar decision. How do we reflect the reality that we take our work with God seriously? We invest in our decision and we do it in a way that's simple to understand, but sometimes difficult to put into practice. We embrace God's ways and determine that we will live according to them. We take his word seriously, for in the scriptures we learn about his ways with us. We take prayer seriously too, but in conversation with God we gain what we need in order to light out our commitment to him. Furthermore, we take each other as siblings in Christ seriously. We regard each other as fellow strugglers who work together with Christ to take a, on God's kingdom, just in our community, around the world, and everywhere in the world. Perhaps Joshua could see the potential for disaster in the faces of the people he addressed that important day at Shechem. They responded to Philip and without any regard for how they intend to make consistent investment in the decision they had just registered. For that reason, he guided them to make their first investment in their decision. He wrote in a book the commitment they had made, and he placed a rock under a tree to remind them of their pledge. Every time they passed that way, they would remember what they said. The rock would hold them accountable for their choice. So the story presents us with a challenge to grow in our relationship with God by studying the options, registering our choice, and investing in the decision we have made. When we do, we count on God to give what we need in order for us to live according to his ways. And that's need an amen to that church. While Jesus calls us to be faithful, the choice remains with us this day. In a sense, it is a daily choice, a daily commitment, because there are so many things that deceive us, that tempt us, that lead us astray. Choose whom you will save this day. I and my family have chosen to save the living God. Amen to that. 
So I'm encouraging you. Before you leave, your gadget, while you are listening to the message, make this a priority today to make a decision whom you will save. The gods whom your forefathers used to worship beyond the river Euphrates. As for me and my family, we have chosen to worship the living God. Who has taken us from Egypt. As we crossed the seas, as we moved in the desert, as we crossed the Jordan River, is the God I'm calling you to worship today. So we need to make a decision, a concrete decision, not wavering between choices, but sticking to what the Bible is calling us to do. May the good Lord bless you as you make this important decision in your life from now and evermore. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Father, we begin to understand more and more that we can be divided in our loyalty. For you alone have the ways of eternal life. Today, Lord, we choose to go deeper into you. For we desire to save you with our whole hearts. Keep us and our families serving you in humility of heart and help us to keep to walking in your light and truth every moment of the day. And look into Jesus, in whose name we pray. As Joshua said in Joshua 24, verse 15, And if it seems evil unto you to save the Lord, choose you this day whom you save. Whether the gods which your father saved that were on the side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my household, who we'll save the living God. Bless us, Father, as we continue to save you. For God, Father God, we know that you look at our inward appearance. We know that you look at how we think. We know that you look at how we speak. We know that you look at how we act. Help us to rely on you through our life. Help us to understand your confidence in us. Help us to be bold and strong, knowing that we belong to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the gifts you have given us. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice, living example to us. Thank you, Father, for looking after us. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. God bless you.